in this video we're going to tackle the last of our kinematic equations that we will use to describe the motion of objects algebraically. In this equation we're going to start with our expression for average velocity which you may remember is simply displacement divided by time and this is the, the expression of that velocity is displacement divided by time and here you go if we look at this uh, if we rearrange it, if we multiply both sides by t, then displacement is velocity times time. And this is what we're going to work with next. We're going we're gonna to manipulate that a little bit. So displacement is velocity times time, what we just looked at. And what you may remember earlier, in one of our earlier kinematic equations, we said that average velocity was the initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2. And so what I'm going to do next is substitute this expression for average velocity because it says they are equivalent. So this is our next move from this one. Displacement is initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2. I've substituted this vector displacement, uh, or, or I mean, excuse me, I've substituted this velocity symbol for this expression because this equation says they're equivalent. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to work with this t. And you also may remember an earlier equation that we had that said the final velocity of an object was the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We derived that earlier. And if we manipulate this equation to isolate T. So up here we've got to subtract both sides by VI. So that gives us final velocity minus initial velocity. And then we have to divide by A to isolate the T. So time is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by acceleration. And I'm going to substitute this expression for T because this says those two are equivalent. And when we do, we end up with this rather nasty looking little expression. So initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2 was what we got up here from this average velocity equation we used earlier. And then this expression we just derived over here. So I'm going to take this to the next page and we're going to manipulate that a little further. So here we go. What we just got through having now what can we do with this? Well, we're multiplying, so I'm just going to multiply this expression together. And when we do that, it says displacement equals final velocity squared, because final velocity times final velocity gives us final velocity squared, minus initial velocity squared, because initial velocity times negative initial velocity will give us negative initial velocity squared, and divided by 2a. So now what I want to do is get 2a out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2a. So that gives us 2ad. If I multiply 2a times d, I have 2ad equals the final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared. And we're almost there, folks. Now, if I add the initial velocity squared to both sides, I'll have initial velocity squared plus 2AD equals final velocity squared. And we're almost there. We're almost done. So the initial velocity squared plus 2AD equals the final velocity squared. Now all I'm going to do is rearrange this. So final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2AD. I simply put final velocity, I, I just changed sides, uh, did a transformation here. So nothing's changed between those two except the order. But I want to get final velocity. So to get rid of this square, I have to take a square root. So the final velocity would be equal to the square root of the initial velocity squared plus 2AD. And there you have it, folks. There is the last of our kinematic equations. Final velocity equal to the square root of the initial velocity squared plus 2AD. And I hope this hasn't been painful. What some uh, instructors do is just give you these equations. 
but I felt like it was worthwhile to go through and show you where they come from, how they're derived, and, and how the algebra is used to, to derive these equations. So there you have it. You have your five kinematic equations at this point, and we will begin using those to analyze the motion of objects algebraically.